This week we are working on solving systems of equations. That's when you have more than one equation. So systems of equations are practical for real life situations. They can help us make decisions by knowing when two possibilities provide the same outcome. Then we can apply the data to determine what is most suitable. So to start, we have Pizza House has a large pizza for $5 and each topping is $1. So the thing that is changing the variable is going to be that each topping is a dollar. So we're gonna start our equation, y equals blank x plus blank. So the thing that is changing is the number of toppings. So if each topping is a dollar, this is just going to be one X. And then to get the large pizza, that is $5. So our equation is y equals one x plus five. For Papa Joe's, we are still setting up a y equals blank x plus blank. The thing that is changing is the number of toppings. So those are 50 cents. And the large pizza is $7. So we have two equations. And what we do is we graph both of them on a line. So we have equation one. Equation one belongs to the pizza house. So let's make that one red. And the other one, is Papa Joe's, we'll make that one blue. So remember, the X was the number of toppings. That's our variable that is changing. So remember, this is our X axis. And the cost, the cost is our y axis. So if I wanna figure out where uh, these two lines meet, I look for the intersection. So these lines intersect or cross at four comma nine. That means that there are four toppings was the force here. And that costs $9. So we have over here like a explanation of how this works. We have the graphs intersect at four nine four is the number of toppings and they would each cost $9. And it doesn't matter what company we order from. If we want fewer than four toppings, Pizza House would be cheaper. If we want greater than four toppings, Papa Joe's would be cheaper. All right, let's look at the next question. We have McCall had two candles. Her tall candle started out at 10 inches and every hour it burned, it lost two inches in height. So what is changing? That is our variable. So it's the height that is changing. We started at 10 inches and we are losing two inches every hour. So we have our general form, y equals mx plus b. So y equals blank, x plus blank. 
The thing that is not changing is the height that the candle started at. So that's 10 inches. And then we are losing two inches in height. So I'm going to say that my slope is negative two. Now the other candle started out at six inches and lost one inch every hour it, bur it burned. So we have another equation, y equals mx plus b. Now this candle started out at six inches. That can't change. It's always going to start at six inches, but the height as it's burning can change. So if it lost one inch every hour, since it's lost, it's going to be negative and we have a negative one. Now we need to graph these. So we'll do equation one in red. So to graph these, you start at the y-intercept. The y-intercept in this case is 10. So start at 10. And now our slope is negative two. So when you have a negative two, we don't have a denominator, but there's a secret number underneath that negative two. There's always a one. So this means that we are going to go down two and over one. So start at your y-intercept, down two, over one, and you put a point. And you keep going, down two, over one, put a point. Down two, over one, put a point. And you can keep going the whole way. Down two over one, down two over one. So that means that this line goes through all of those points. And let me get rid of these. Now we're going to graph the other equation. Do that one in blue. So we always start at our y-intercept, which is six. And then our slope is negative one. So do you remember what number is underneath every number? That's a one. So we're gonna go down one because it's negative and then over one. So start at your y-intercept, down one, over one. 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 So where is our point of intersection? Where is our solution? Our solution is where the lines cross. So in this case, we have four on our x-axis, comma, two on the y-axis. Now remember the x-axis, the four is the number of hours. And the height is the number of inches. That's our y value. So two is the height. So after four hours, both candles will be two inches tall. That's what our solution means. Which candle will burn longer? 
So what one is going to take longer to burn? Well, this blue one ends at six hours and the red one ends at five hours. So we are going to say the blue candle. And in that case, that's our short candle. So things to remember about solving a systems of equations. You have more than one equation and you are looking for where those equations intersect on the graph. That is the solution. That point of intersection where they cross is called the solution. So for number two, it says Zeke began with $2 and earned $3 for each chore. So we have our equation y equals mx plus b. And we just have some blanks there because those are the numbers you need to fill in. If I began with $2, that is my y-intercept, because that does not change. The number of chores changes. And so I get $3 for each chore. So that's going to be my slope. Let's go ahead and graph that equation. You start by putting the y-intercept on your graph. So the y-intercept was two. Now your slope is three. What number is secretly under every other number? Well, that's one. So in this case, we have a positive three, which means we need to go up three. Then we have a one, which means that we are going over one. So start at your y-intercept. Start at that blue point that we just made and count up three. One, two, three, and over one. Count up three. One, two, three, and over one. Count up three. One, two, three, and over one. So we're going to connect those points to make our line for equation one. For equation two, it says we began with $6 and we earned $1 for each chore. So we have y equals mx plus b blank x plus blank. We started with $6, so that's our y-intercept. And our slope is one. What number is secretly under every other number? Well, that is also one. So we are going up one. And then we are going over one. And you have to start at your y-intercepts. So you start at six, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. So that is our graph for the second equation. Oops. So what is my solution? Where do these lines intersect? Where do those lines cross? So the lines cross here. So we call this our intersection. That's where they cross.
It is also referred to as your solution. So the solution is two on our x-axis, so two chores. And we have eight on our y-axis, so $8 is our money. So you need to write this with the x first, so two comma eight, two chores. gives you $8. No matter if you're Zeke or Drew, if you do two chores, you would get $8. This next question is who will have the most money in the long run? So that means later on, who has more money? So what graph is higher on the y-axis? And that is going to be the blue one. That's gonna be Zeke. Number three says fed up, fed up charges a flat rate of $4 to ship a package plus $2 per pound. So when I write my equation, we have y equals mx plus b for blank x plus blank. So this is the thing that's changing the $2 per pound. So that's going to be my slope. And I start at $4, no matter what, that's a flat rate. So if I'm going to graph this line, four is my y-intercept. So you put a point at four. And my slope is two. What number is secretly under two? So we do two over one, up two over one, starting at that number four, starting at our y-intercept. So up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Connect those points to make a line. So that is for fed up. All right, equation two. UPX charges a flat rate of two and $3 for each pound. So we have y equals blank x plus blank. So we start at $2 and then it's $3 for each pound. So two is my y-intercept. Three is my slope. Now, what is secretly underneath the three is a one. Mm -hmm. So we are going up three over one. Mm -hmm. Up three over one. Mm -hmm. Up three over one. Mm -hmm. Up three mm -hmm. over one. You're going to connect those points to make a line. Get rid of all these extra things here. So what is my solution? Where do these lines intersect? So these lines intersect here. That means we have two. Two is going to be our number of pounds. 
So two is our number of pounds and eight is going to be my number of dollars. That's how much it's going to cost. So it doesn't matter what company um, you ship with. If you have a package that weighs two pounds, it will cost you $8. Our next question is which is a better deal for a three pound package? So here's three pounds. What is a better deal? That means which one costs less? Blue costs less than red. Because it's uh, blue is at 10 and red is at 11. So we should choose the blue company, which we said was fed up. So this is A, P, and P. They have two phone plans. Plan A has an initial fee of $4 plus $1 for each text. So we have one and then it starts at four. So we put our Y intercept at four and our slope is one. So we're gonna go up one, over one. Up one, over one. Up one, over one, and you're gonna keep going until you run out of graph. Connect those to make our line. So that is plan A. Plan B has no fee. So that means my y-intercept is zero. And we have $2 for each text. So my y-intercept was zero. Then we need to go up two and over one. Up two, over one. Up two, over one. Up two, over one. Up two, over one. And up two, over one. Now you need to connect these to make our graph, our line. Now, what is our solution? Our solution is, our, our solution is where the graphs intersect. They intersect at that purple point. That means four texts cost eight dollars so four texts cost eight dollars no matter if you have plan a or plan b both plans if you sent four texts it would cost eight dollars the last question is what is a better deal for you i am sure that you send more than four texts a day so if you have more texts, let's say you send seven texts a day, then the blue plan is going to be better. That is plan A. All right, I hope that helped you understand how to graph a systems of equations. What you need to remember is that the solution is where the graphs intersect. And we will continue on this tomorrow.